Superman might be the world's most famous superhero, but Clark Kent is pretty impressive in his own right. Still, there's a whole lot even the most die-hard fans get wrong about Superman's mild-mannered alter ego. Here are a few of the biggest misconceptions about Clark Kent. When it comes to pulling off incredible feats of heroism, people tend to go with the invincible alien Superman over the demure reporter Clark Kent. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. As such, you might think that Kent isn't all that when he's not wearing the red and blue spandex. But the truth is, while Kent's second life as a superhero tends to overshadow his journalistic accomplishments, that doesn't make them any less impressive. His byline frequently appears on the front page of the Daily Planet, arguably the most widely read newspaper in the DC Universe's version of the United States. And while there aren't many comics about Kent conducting lengthy interviews and typing at his computer, direct evidence of his award-winning track record appears in the legendary Mark Wade and Alex Ross comic Kingdom Come. The scene in question starts with Kent, who's going by his Kryptonian birth name, Kal-El, chatting with Wonder Woman outside the Watchtower. Kal-El is halfway through recalling a recent final encounter with Brainiac when he mentions that some of the villain's circuitry has been hidden inside a Pulitzer in Clark Kent's apartment. Take note, he says a Pulitzer, not the Pulitzer, suggesting that, incredibly, Kent might actually have more than one. One of Superman's constants throughout the character's 80-plus years of history is the tension between his small-town upbringing and his adult life in the fast-paced metropolis of Metropolis. As such, whenever someone accuses the concept of Superman of being old-fashioned, that someone is usually talking about Clark Kent's Midwestern identity rather than anything specific to Superman as a hero. Indeed, the wholesome Norman Rockwell-esque image of the American breadbasket that underlies Smallville does scan as a little quaint. But the Clark Kent character isn't as old-fashioned as you might assume. Take one of the other constants in Superman's life, the romance between him and Lois Lane. If Kent's really such a slack-jawed hayseed, then how could a sophisticated, cynical journalist like Lois be in love with him? It's also worth considering that traveling to unfamiliar countries tends to be enough to broaden a person's horizons. And Kent's been to a whole bunch of different planets, which would suggest that his horizons are plenty broad, no matter how simple his upbringing may have been. So while it may be totally fair to call Clark Kent square in the Huey Lewis sense of the word, don't go thinking he's a man of the past, because the truth is, he's anything but. Clark Kent's need to keep his superhero identity hidden from the world is one of the most important aspects of the character. And he's gone to some pretty crazy lengths to do it, too. So it might be easy to imagine that the world will never really know Superman's secret. But this all changed in February 2020 with the release of Superman Volume 5, Number 18. In this story, Superman gets burnt out on keeping secrets and finally lets the world know the truth, that he's actually been the Daily Planet reporter and Smallville native Clark Kent this whole friggin' time. Of course, the status quo is never static for long in the world of DC Comics, so it's impossible to know how long Superman's identity will remain public knowledge. But until the next continuity reset or massive retcon changes everything back again, the heroes and citizens of the DC Universe will continue to know that Clark Kent is really Superman, for better or for worse. Plenty of people wrongly assume that Batman and Superman are natural adversaries. And the blame for this misconception doesn't fall entirely on Zack Snyder's shoulders either. While Batman vs. Superman certainly popularized the notion that the two characters hate each other, the pop culture commentator Chuck Klosterman described their relationship as that of arch-enemies in a 2007 essay, almost a full decade before the release of Snyder's film. On top of that, the comics themselves have occasionally pitted the two against each other in a wide variety of contexts. And while it's true that Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne have a very complicated relationship, you only need to take a cursory glance at some more recent Superman stories to know that the friendship between these two heroes plays a crucial role in the DC Universe. A recent run of Batman even commemorated their bond with a two-part arc in which each hero agonizes over the other being far more noble, brave, and kind-hearted than themselves. They then promptly get over it, go on a double date with Lois and Selina, and visit a batting cage, where they argue over whether Bruce can land a hit on Clark's Kryptonian fastball. See? They're practically best buddies. So here's a question. Just how close are Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne? Well, turns out they're such pals that they've even traded outfits on a handful of occasions. That's right, Clark Kent is Batman. Well, sometimes. In Tom King and Clay Mann's run on Batman, Bruce Wayne dresses up as Superman and Clark Kent dons the cape and cowl. 
This is pretty much their only option in the moment as they're trying to meet the costume criteria for Superhero Night at the Gotham County Fair without revealing their secret identities. A glasses-wearing Kent Batman is exactly as funny as it sounds, too, especially when Lois Lane has to talk him out of using his super strength to win her a carnival prize. In another instance, mind-controlling nanites take Bruce Wayne out of action in a 1998 episode of Superman the Animated Series, leading Clark Kent to temporarily take up the mantle of Batman. Right here. Look familiar? Bane. Ah, yes. Bane. Kent and Tim Drake eventually rescue their brooding colleague and in the process prove something long suspected of Superman. That with the possible exception of the Joker, he can brush aside the bulk of Batman's rogues gallery without much effort. Can't see Batman dispatching Doomsday so easily, can you? Time to up the ante, Bruce. Ask someone the most important difference between Clark Kent and Superman, and they'll probably tell you it's the fact that Clark Kent wears glasses. It's also pretty well known that this flimsy little disguise is enough to fool everybody kal -El meets. But some people have seen through the disguise, such as one particularly sly resident of Gotham City. During Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle's engagement, Kent expresses some reservations about meeting his buddy's new fiancé. After all, revealing his secret identity to a former super criminal seems like a pretty risky bet. But Lois lets her husband know that Selina seems naturally gifted at figuring out people's secrets and that the chances are she already knows who Kent really is. The very next page finds Batman and Catwoman watching over the Gotham City skyline. The feline fatale quickly confirms Lane's suspicions. Riley pointing out that a little hair gel and a pair of glasses isn't quite the foolproof disguise that Clark Kent thinks it is. Though Catwoman is far too insightful to fall for Clark Kent's silly glasses routine, it's worth pointing out that pretty much everyone else does. In Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly's All-Star Superman, for example, even those nearest and dearest to Kent can't seem to put two and two together. Lex Luthor, allegedly the smartest man in the whole world, looks a glassesless Kent right in the face and makes no connection whatsoever. In another scene, the staff of the Daily Planet watches as Kent stares down a powered-up Luther. When it becomes obvious that this is actually Superman confronting his nemesis, Jimmy Olsen simply suggests that Superman has disguised himself as Clark Kent. Of course, you could argue that it's hard to recognize a godlike superhero when he's standing next to you at the water cooler, and some people do look totally different when they're wearing or not wearing a pair of glasses. Still, though, you'd think that some of the world's greatest reporters might have caught on by now. Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns might be a pretty great comic, but it was the worst thing to ever happen to Clark Kent's reputation. This iconic comic book story sees a Ronald Reagan-esque United States president order Superman to bring in Batman, whose tactics don't fall in step with the government's new anti-vigilante regulations. Batman quite rightly accuses his Justice League co-founder of spinelessness in the face of, well, basically anyone with a badge or a flag. Thus, one of the most famous superhero stories of all time successfully makes the point that the most famous superhero of all time is kind of a chump. But while The Dark Knight Returns portrayed Kent as differential and servile, he hasn't always been the kind of guy who has to do whatever authority figures tell him. In fact, Superman has brought down President Lex Luthor on a few different occasions, and in one instance, he even goes full Man of Steel and outright fries Luthor's democratically elected brains. And then there's Justice League Unlimited. The macro plot of this 2004 animated series revolves around Superman refusing to play ball with high-ranking government employee Amanda Waller. So don't go thinking Kent doesn't know how to play the rebel when it suits him. Still, you've got to hand it to mid-1980s Frank Miller. Only he could convince the world that Superman would attack Batman because the president thought Batman was fighting crime too hard. Clark Kent is the original Superman and the default Superman, and no one's ever gonna make the case to the contrary. But he's not the only Superman. In fact, during DC's line-wide Future State event, Clark Kent isn't Superman at all. Instead, that designation belongs to Jonathan Kent, Clark's son with Lois Lane. Overall, though, Clark has had an easier time hanging on to the exclusive use of his famous alias than some of the other heroes out there. But let's not forget the brief period following Clark's death in the 90s, in which Steel, Hank Henshaw, Connor Kent, and the Eradicator were all briefly and unofficially considered Superman. In one of the most memorable chapters of Superman the Animated Series, Bizarro also successfully passes himself off as the genuine article for about a day. Oh, how could he? I'm Superman. Me. <clears throat> Me. Still, nobody apart from Clark seems able to hold down the gig for very long. 
So does this mean that being Superman is more difficult than, say, being Spider-Man? Well, who could say? But a whole lot of people have been Spider-Man over the years, and only one man seems able to pull off being Superman. Something to consider, don't you think? To most people, the names Superman and Lois Lane seem like natural bedfellows. The ABC series Lois and Clark only strengthened that connection in the 90s, and 2021 CW series Superman and Lois is likely to do the same. But Clark Kent and Lois Lane haven't been romantically involved for the entirety of their respective fictional existences. As many readers may be aware, Clark's high school sweetheart and ongoing semi-platonic gal pal is actually Lana Lang. Sporadically throughout the last roughly 40 years worth of comics, Superman has also gotten romantically tangled up with Princess Diana of Themyscira. In fact, Superman and Wonder Woman have far more in common than Lois and Clark, or Diana and Steve Trevor for that matter. But every time these two heroes get together sooner or later, they usually end up back with their traditional partners. Maybe that's just because those characters need to periodically reset to their status quos. Or maybe it's because Wonder Woman and Superman always get to know each other as superheroes, and neither can live up to those hyper-idyllic first impressions. But Lois? Well, she first meets him as Clark Kent, a regular old Joe from Kansas, so her expectations for their relationship are just a little more grounded. Probably makes for a simpler date night, too. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.